All right. Until now, we talked about uh, capital market line, security market line, and characteristic line uh, to estimate beta, right? Those three things you have to distinguish, right? Um, and estimating beta using regression, characteristic line, right, by the way, is just one way of estimating those beta. And then uh, alternative way of estimating beta is bottom-up beta. Okay, we're going to talk about it today. Um, by the way, um, estimating beta, we, we have to talk a, a lot more in detail about the, how to set up those things, right? Uh, the data part. Um, by the way, uh, do you recognize any difference today? Well, headset, right? And this one, seem cool, right? Um, this is a gaming um, headset. That enables me to manipulate Monster. my voice somehow. Um, do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here. All right. Let me. Oh yeah, you've been hearing my magic voice. Oh. Uh, well, I can switch it to this. Can you hear me? Uh, maybe I should try it. I can't hear anything from this. But you are already hearing that, right? So I have a choice. Mail. Of four different versions of magic voice. And then uh female. female voice if you like. Uh I don't know. Uh cartoonistic voice, right? Or Monster, monster voice, right? If you don't do your homework, I'm gonna punish you, right? And then cartoonistic voice. Why do I need this? I know that so many of you are not listening to my lecture and then postpone um, this lecture listening until the last moment. And so much so that you turn on this YouTube at the two times the speed or something, or 1.5 times. There, my voice will be like, like this, right? How do I know that? Well, my wife, right? Um, since last semester, right? She's been taking those, uh, what's that? Korea Cyber Dehakyo. Cyber University. She's been going through that. She, uh, because she wants to study in self-realization way, right? Uh, she majored in Spanish literature before, but uh, she wanted to study on something more. So she's taking it. But the thing is, she delays until the last moment and then just like you guys right <laughs> listening to those uh, uh videos at the last moment two times the speed <laughs> like this okay um but because i'm uh, once i try this cartoonistic voice which is high pitch right um i'm afraid you will not be able to you know uh, uh use that two times the speed thing uh which i hope we push you to listen to my or take my class in real time basis or as at the correct order in the correct week instead of waiting until the last moment. Okay? Um, so, at the correct speed, hopefully. Right? Uh, let's see. And getting Normal. back to my original voice. Um, so, this is kind of a fun factor I'm trying to bring. Okay? Um, and each time I try to bring my fun factor um, and then hardware stuff has to come into my house because I'm recording everything at my home. This is my bedroom, by the way. Uh, each time I bring in, I almost get killed by my wife, by the way. Um, this whiteboard I told you before, when I purchased this and I brought it into my home, I almost got killed because my home is small apartment is small quite packed and my wife was like you bring in this yeah, and then and then this time i bought this one and then she's like what are you doing with that stuff right it's a, bringing a toy um to play yourself or something okay but the thing is i don't play uh computer games believe it or not right uh, even though my computers are gaming computers um i swear you i mean i don't okay play computer games yet i don't have time to do that but i just found out it could be you know i figured out this could be a fun thing to 
Manipulate Mind the monster. Mind a little bit like this, and then make you stay awake, hopefully, alright? Good. No. So I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, um, getting back to this beta estimation, right? Let's go. Let's go. Alright, so maybe I should place this thing over here. Yeah! Alright, so... So, when you are running regressions, right, of to estimate those beta in the characteristic line, um, you have to decide on an estimation period. Uh, services use periods ranging from two to five years, right? Yahoo beta or Google Finance betas or Neighbor Finance and the, uh, whatever finance website. They provide beta estimates, but you have to be careful, okay? Um, about their estimation period. Is it two years period or five years period or just one year period? Okay. The thing is you want to be coherent. Okay. Coherent. When you are comparing different companies, right? Those betas have to be in, this, in the same period estimation. Uh, longer estimation period provides more data, but firms change. Let's say five years estimation period. Seems good. That seems good. But what if the company switched from one industry to completely new industry? Okay. Nowadays, it seems like a tough time for airline industries. So some companies may switch out of airline industry and go into some other service industries. Um, maybe, on the other hand, some companies like Agyeong Group, right? Agyeong Group. Some of their companies uh, decided to take over airlines so that their previous industry exposure is completely different from what they are going to have from now on. Okay, um, The beta has to reflect those kind of industry nature because industry tells you about the sensitivity to this market movement. Remember, the beta has to be an estimate of uh, the sensitivity to the macro shock, right? Um, and then, all right, uh, shorter periods can be affected more easily by a significant firm specific event that occurred during the period. Um, for example, let's see you are estimating beta for Luckin Coffee these days. Luckin Coffee China or Lukin Coffee. Lucin Coffee, ah, cafe, uh, her cafe, ni her cafe, ah, uh, uh, Starbucks or Looking, Looking Coffee. Um, turns out that Looking Coffee uh, is a complete fraud, right? So that uh, the price have plunged by 80% in a single day. And then your observation period includes this minus 80% downward movement, right? Um, your beta estimate will include this kind of idiosyncratic a stock return, uh, idiosyncratic uh, risk factor, which is uh, company's fraud, okay, firm specific, very firm specific one. Yeah, you can still estimate the Luckin Coffee's beta, but that does not really tell you anything about the coffee industry's sensitivity to macro shock. Your purpose, remember, is to estimate the riskiness of coffee business, right? But the limitation over here is that, you know, shorter time interval, uh, shorter, time, uh, uh, shorter time estimation window, okay, will take you to capture those idiosyncratic parts much more than not, okay? So longer estimation window has a shortfall uh, and then Shorter estimation window also has a shortfall. Does that mean that you have to go into the low, uh, middle term, uh, middle uh, of the road, okay? Estimation window, like three years or whatever. Not that much, okay? Not really, not really. All that I'm trying to say is that there's no perfect answers in valuation, okay? Just be aware. Just be aware and be ready to say it out loud about those limitations for each and every method of choices, okay? Everything is 
imperfect okay everything is imperfect um, and then let's move on deciding on a return interval okay we have to compute okay for the data purpose right you need return information and then the return depends on the return interval okay so should we cut the return interval as daily basis or weekly basis or monthly basis right um, again each choice will have its own good part and bad part of it right so shorter intervals yield more number of observations but it suffers from more noise for example uh, daily intervals right daily return intervals let's say you have one year uh, period to estimate beta one year period how many return intervals would you have if you choose to go for daily returns well 255 trading days in a given year on a usually right 255 observations will be there ready for you to be estimating right how about monthly return intervals well only 12 months is there 12 number of observations right so your return intervals um, well uh, you have less number of observations you have your own problem there too okay shorter intervals by the way daily intervals or sometimes if you, if you go to a high frequency traders or hedge funds right which trade every second okay or even millisecond every millisecond then your return intervals that you estimate okay maybe sometimes like uh, one minute or two minutes or 15 seconds or one hour okay short return intervals you will work with okay shorter intervals like that gives you much more number of observations there that's good but they are more noisy what noisy how noisy can it be right what do you mean by that well when it if your stock is Samsung Electronics or well-known companies that everybody trades no problem okay it's not that noisy but if your stock is a small stock okay usually those individual investors individual investors they trade small stocks right that nobody knows but those kind of stocks you have some problem as well which is uh, there's no trade over one day or two days at all okay is that return zero or sometimes they just mechanically represent the price as a quote bid price bid quote and then ask quote that bid ask bounce will be there okay I'm not gonna test you on this idea about this this noisiness that I, that's what I'm trying to say mechanically those stocks will be a lot more noisy because there's less number of trades um, noise is created by stocks not trading okay uh, this kind of shorter intervals will be noisy as well as a longer period for some stocks over a quarter there is no trade <laughs> so uh, a lot uh, a lot noisy problem noiseness problem will be there for you uh, estimate returns on stocks you know this formula right choose a market index and then estimate returns on the index for each interval for the period so you have to determine the index that you are in, uh, that you will use as uh, you know uh, x axis variable right so S&P 500 or MSCI world index which one would you choose and the crisp CompuStat or COSPI index all these kind of things right so let's see so beta right um, first of all the beta of market portfolio is something worth looking at what was uh, market portfolios beta by definition it had to be one you remember that yes um, and in regression okay this is by definition it has to be right regressing market portfolios index return upon itself upon itself right so that will be one unity always that will be the case no matter what kind of um, 
portfolio you choose, S&P 500 or Kospi index or whatever index that you choose, right? Index return regressed upon itself will always be one. So that's what we typically find uh, as you see in this chart uh, over here, okay? Um, everything lines up nicely on this 45 degrees line. Um, then Disney, okay? Here's uh, Disney, Walt Disney's uh, stock return regressed upon um, S&P 500. So what you see on the horizontal axis is the return on S&P 500 index, uh, month by month, 60 months data. And what you see on the vertical axis is the monthly return of uh, Disney for each time point, okay? And then, uh, so let's see. Uh, you know how to generate this uh, scatter plot and then uh, the regression line based on that. Now, uh, is Apple riskier? Wait, wait, wait. Is Disney, wait a minute, okay. Is Disney, okay, I should have said this one, sorry. D-I-S. Disney riskier than the market or not based on this regression result well what do you think what would you look at we look at this one beta is it bigger than one or not is the question right so it is bigger than one so we can say that it is riskier than the market right and <clears throat> what percentage of Disney's total risk is attributable to market risk well, how, do the, how can we answer this question? Um, well, this question itself is specific to regression setting. Okay, regression setting. Well, in regression, we always get the R squared, right? The, this tells us about the percentage or proportion of the total risk of the stock that is explained by the explanatory variable. In this case, the market risk right so 58 percent of them the total risk is explained by the uh, market risk okay the remaining part uh, 42 percent 41 point about seven ish percent that's going to be idiosyncratic right idiosyncratic uh, risk or firm specific risk part okay and as you see uh, even for the same companies, right? Even for the same company, depending on the regression result, this proportion, okay, that you divide between the portion explained by market and then explained not by the market, right? This will change, okay, depending on the data sample that you choose, okay? So this is not strictly, uh, you know, uh, a well quantified measure of market risk itself. Uh, the market risk measure that we use is um, the beta, okay, or, or beta. And then let's go next, right? And then regression table based on this Disney, right? 1.17. You see that the same result over here, right? This is when you formally run a regression, linear regression using Excel, right? And then regression parameters are always estimated with error um, because parameter is something not visible, just like true value of your company, right? And the true beta, that's unobservable, but the parameter itself, right? That conceptually, we have that idea uh, clearly, but it's just out of observation. And then what you can observe is just a realization and then some estimation, right? And so that's why this uh, estimation has it will be noisy in any case. Um, and then the error is captured in the standard error, um, which is this guy, um, of the beta estimate, which is this one. Um, which in the case of Disney is 0.13. Assume that I ask you what Disney's true beta is after this regression. What is your best point estimate? Well, the point estimate of true beta, well, that's this guy, okay, uh, 1.17. And what range would you give me with 67% confidence? That means one standard error plus and minus, 
right? So 1.77, uh, that's sample, what's that, beta hat, beta hat, beta hat, I should say beta hat, and then minus standard error 1, standard error, and plus 1 standard error, okay? Uh, 1 standard error. So this one, if you compute it, you will get what? 7, 0, and then uh, 3.1. Is that right? So it's like, it's, it's like a 1.3, right? How about, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's this guy, 1.3. 7 and this guy should be what 1.047 right so that will be your lower bound and upper bound and what range would you give me with 95 percent confidence well 95 confidence interval do you remember 1.96 standard error right so 1.77 uh, uh, 1.177 plus and minus 1.96 times 0 0.13. I should say like this. Right? So if I bring my um, Excel spreadsheet or, or should I bring my. Wait a minute. So. If I bring my calculator like this, do you see this, right? Um, hello, the calculator, Texas Instrument BA2 Plus, is that right? The CFA um, calculator, right? Then, you let's see, turn it on, okay, turn it on, right? And then, um, 1.77, 1.177, right? I'm sorry, 1.177. Um, plus and parentheses right 96 times okay 1.96 times um 0 0.13 0 0.13 and close the parentheses right that calculates the second term over there and then punch equal that gives me the final result right 1.4318 one point four three one eight and lower bound should be what um one point nine six times point one three mm, that should be my one point one seven seven and then um uh, yeah zero point nine zero Point nine two 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 right so um, I should have said it this way lower bound and upper bound one point four three one eight right so the lower bound and upper bound and within this range okay and you see um, where is the true beta of Disney, right? Is the true beta really, really higher than market beta? And you may say, you would say in this case, at 95% confidence level, not really, right? Uh, we don't know. There's a, uh, because one market beta will be somewhere in this range, right? So there is noise going on, okay? Thinking about Disney's, um, Disney's business, right? Um, uh, it's it, it essentially right the film industry and then the Disney theme park right industry um, all these things right is it more sensitive to the market or less sensitive to the market right would the parents stop bringing their children to the uh, theme park simply because it's a recession less likely right the kids are born kids kids keep on crying and then you need to find some way to entertain them no matter what okay um, so maybe not that much you know high beta so that's why 
it may fall below one, okay, to a certain degree. Um, that's one thing we can think about. Anyway, so all, I, all I'm trying to say is that this beta, regression beta, is always estimated with some errors. And then <coughs> the standard errors, right? Dirty secrets of uh, standard errors is shown over here. Distribution of standard errors or beta estimates for US stocks. This one is a graph. What this graph is trying to tell you is again, all the betas, right? Remember Disney's beta standard error in this case, uh, in our example, example was 0 0.13 standard error, okay? And then actually, if you run these regressions for thousands of different stocks in the United States, well, those standard errors, one, uh, 0 0.13 standard error, it happens to be somewhere over here, okay? Uh, we were kind of lucky to have less noisy estimate of beta uh, because the standard error itself uh, is, was, is in the uh, <coughs> smaller part in this histogram. And actually, um, the standard error for thousands of different stocks in the United States, they turned out, uh, turn out to be you know, having more noise. Okay? The standard error tends to be much bigger than uh, the standard error of Disney that we got before. Um, so, <clears throat> always we have to be careful about this kind of noise issue. Um, with this one, 0 0.13 standard error, you remember that the uh, upper bound and lower bound was, you know, covering beta of 1, right? And imagine, imagine what will happen if your standard error happened to be uh, more than 0.75, okay? 0.75 times 1.96. That's almost like what? 1.4 or 1.5 kind of things. Add it to or subtracted it from your estimated beta. Well, you will even, uh, you know, your beta range will be even negative, right? Uh, going to all the way down, all the way up to positive, right? Negative, all the way up to positive. Anyway, <clears throat> so the degree of noisy, uh, noise, right? is a serious issue, okay? And then, <coughs> estimating required rate of returns for Disney in March 2015. Inputs to the expect expected return calculation. Well, uh, once you, you know, estimate your beta, uh, when you calculate the required rate of return using SML, right? Um, well, Disney's beta 1.177, and then the risk-free rate, let's say, you got it uh, from the central bank's uh, website, right? 1.93%, and then risk premium, 5.76%, uh, uh, let's just assume it, and then the impl it comes from implied risk premium uh, at that time, right? And then, and then, uh, you could have obtained the uh, risk premium using other uh, approaches like a historical risk premium, you know that. And then required return, okay, in this case will be using this uh, security market line equation or CAPM equation. Um, if you do the math, and then you will be able to find it is 8.71%. Good. Um, right. Um, regression. Okay, beta, there's a problem always, right? Uh, standard e procedure for estimating beta is to regress stock returns against uh, market returns, and then the slope of the regression corresponds to the beta of the stock and the measure uh, measures the riskiness of the stock. Okay, this beta has three problems. One, it has high standard error, it is noisy, right? And then it reflects the firm's uh, business mix over the period of the regression, um, not the current mix. Um, so uh, it reflects the firm's average financial leverage over the um, period rather than the current leverage. So what if the firm drastically increases its bank debt uh, or switch to another industry uh, all of a sudden, right? Uh, this regression beta will be helpless, hopeless, right? This kind of things would not be a problem if you are just uh, um, short-term investors like uh, uh, high-frequency traders or quick hedge funds, right? Um, but this kind of thing will be a serious problem if you are um, 
private equity com managers, right? Private equity. Why? Because once a private equity takes over a company, um, and then they drastically switch, okay, change the either the industry structure or capital structure of the company they take over, took over, okay. Uh, so going forward, they need some forward-looking beta instead of regression betas. So private equity, like a, a Stig kind of company, right, uh, or Blackstone, right, mm, KKR, they have to uh, they have to pay much more attention to something called bottom-up beta reg instead of regression beta. Um, it cannot be estimated for firms who do not have stock returns. Um, for example. Um, private companies, right? When you are valuing a private company that has never been traded in, that has never been traded in the stock market before, you don't have observation in the first place, okay? Uh, how could you run a regression based on no more observation? Only in your mind, okay? Uh, only in your wildest dreams, right? No way. Um, so if you are a venture capitalist, or uh, again, private equity guys, right? You will deal with a lot of private companies not listed in the stock market. So the regression beta in that sense will not be available to you in the first place, okay? Um, so there is a problem. Any better approach to estimate a forward-looking beta, okay? Uh, is a challenge, right? Estimate the beta for the firms from the bottom up without uh, employing the regression technique this is quite uh, it, this will require understanding a business mix of the firm and then estimating the financial leverage of the companies right um, well what determines beta then will be a big question there okay um, the thing is the betas right um, cyclicality of the industry matters there Okay, more cyclical industries, well, cyclical to, I mean, that means by nature, sensitive to the uh, market macro movement, okay? When boom time versus bust time, okay, uh, in the macro econ economy, well, this kind of, uh, the, the highly cyclical industries, they will have higher beta than the companies with uh, low cyclicality okay you can sell the products no matter what versus you can sell the products only in the boom times right no soup for the bust times no soup what do you mean 국물도 없어요 right uh no chance right uh for the bust times then you have higher betas and operating leverage increases beta okay this is uh, an independent factor there, right? Aside from the cyclicality. Operating leverage, what is that? You have a f fixed cost, right? The proportion of fixed cost matters, right? If your cost structure of your company, right, has a um, uh, high fixed cost proportion, like uh, heavy industries, petrochemical, right? petrochemical, um, uh, where you have to invest a lot of fixed assets, um, equipment, and then all those facilities there, you have to depreciate a lot of your fixed assets. Um, you have to recognize those costs as a fixed cost no matter what in your income statement. Then you have high operating leverage. Well, operating leverage, what do you mean? When, when the bus time comes, right, when the recession comes, no sales, but you still have to recognize high uh, fixed cost, okay, more trouble to, for you. In contrast, when there is a boom time, right, when there is a boom time, um, you have extremely high revenues, but your fixed cost doesn't go away, doesn't increase, does not increase as much as your sales. So you have a lot more profit margin coming in during the boom time. So boom time, you have rich profit, bust time, you're going to hell. So you will be much more, um, you know, what's that? The, well, your company will be much more risky. The net income will be fluctuating much more depending on the market situation. So high operating leverage naturally gives 
high beta. Okay, your market, uh, the the company's profit, and uh, will be much more sensitive to the ma uh, macroeconomic movement. Now, uh, cash holding reduces beta. Now, cash holding in your company. Well, if your business is nothing but holding cash, right? Then um, what do you have? Cash is cash is cash is cash. It doesn't go away, right? It doesn't go away. It doesn't hurt you, right? And then uh, cash is risk-free, essentially. Where do you put your money, okay? Uh, you save it in the bank, right? You save it in the bank and you get the interest income, which is close to risk-free rate anyway, okay? Um, so that means risk-freeness, risk-free nature of this cash means that cash beta equals zero okay cash beta equals zero so uh, if your business is just holding cash which means just a rich family right your beta is zero okay it reduces beta the more proportion uh, if you if cash takes up more proportion of your asset right then it will reduce uh, the total beta of your asset later Okay. Um, also, what determines beta of your companies? Well, if you have multiple divisions, then your beta will be the weighted average of the betas of each division. Make sense? Why is that the case? Uh, in this slide, right? Uh, if you remember what we talked about in the beginning of this slide, uh, right? Um, we noticed that the portfolio beta should be the weighted average betas of the component stocks. Okay. Similar idea. Okay. If your company, let's say Samsung Electronics, they have multiple divisions. One is a semiconductor a memory chip industry. Okay. Um, two, they have cell phone division. Right. Cell phone. Unfortunately, uh, sorry Samsung, I got uh, Apple over here, but uh, I used to have Samsung, okay, Galaxy. That cell phone division, it's a totally different industry um, from the chip industry, right? And then, <coughs> and then, number three, consumer electrics, electronics, which is your uh, monitor. Yes, I have Samsung monitor down there. You see that? Can you see it? All right, here, over here, right. Um, that consumer electronics is uh, also a separate industry, different from uh, memory chip, okay? So each different industry has different cyclicality, right? And then each different industries have their unique operating leverage level so that, so that, each different division naturally should have different betas, okay, which comes from their industry nature, cyclicality, and operating leverage in the cost structure. Make sense? So semiconductor division will have their own beta, and then Galaxy division they will have their own beta, and then consumer goods, consumer electrics, uh, electronics, right? Consumer electronics division they will have their own betas. They have three different betas, right? Of course, Samsung will have fourth beta, which is like a telecom equipment uh, division, right? So four different divisions, they will have uh, four different betas. And then the whole Samsung's, right, um, betas should be the weighted average of these four, okay? Um, so that's what we have to talk about. And then by this... Uh, four elements, we will come up with something called unlevered beta. And then after that, uh, another thing we have to think about is the leverage, financial leverage of the company. Why is that the case? Because um, if you look at the, co uh, the income statement, you have to pay the interest expense no matter what. Okay, So that, I mean, the bankers come and take your uh, interest expense away, regardless of the economic uh, business cycle, boom or bust, th doesn't matter. The, just ba bankers keep on coming and say, what, money never sleeps? I want your money? 
and then give me your interest. Uh, so that will hurt your net income uh, drastically, especially in this kind of uh, recession time. Uh, boom time, they still come and you know, take away the same amount of interest expense, okay? But in boom time, you have huge sales, right? So you don't worry about it that much. You have a high profit, whereas in the bust time, you have extremely low profit because of this fixed cost. And that fixed cost nature uh, is similar over here. Uh, operating leverage versus financial leverage. It's all about the fixed cost, but this one was about the cost of goods sold and SG&A part, uh, the operating cost, right? And this one is about is about non-operating cost, okay? Non-operating cost, which is called interest expense, right? They have this. Uh, they have share the same nature of being fixed. That makes your profit more cyclical or more sensitive to the macro shock or market-wide shock, okay? So these are the key determinants of your betas, right? Now, what determines betas? Yeah, the industry matters, right? What you see on the left-hand side is the beta range. Some companies have very high betas. For example, uh, Bulgari, right? Bulgari. What is that? Uh, I, like B V L Gari, right? Um, luxury goods, right? Um, those are uh, you know perfumes uh, or just gems, uh, let's say gems or uh, precious. Uh, how do you say those kind of? Um, luxury goods that you see in the uh, Saks Fifth Avenue kind of uh, uh, um, department store, Neiman Marcus, or uh, I don't know, Galleria Cheongdamdong. If you go there, right, and you will see this Bulgari kind of guys, or Ferrari, Lamborghini kind of com uh, the the these right, Rolls Royce kind of uh, uh, goods, right, uh, luxury goods. Well. They proclaim, those luxury goods companies proclaim in the newspaper that they say, well, the rich people, extreme rich people keeps on buying our, our products regardless of the, um, what's that, regardless of the business cycle. But is that really the case? Or are they just a saying as a you know, way of advertising their brand name just to impress people? Just to impress people, come on, okay? Uh, not many people can afford to go there, and then by na you know naturally they will have lower sales amount um, in the recession time. Okay, uh, tough time for you guys. Okay, good luck. And then um, beta between one and two. Okay, which is riskier than the market, right? Um, usually high tech companies, you know, have higher betas. Let's say, um, what about? Uh, uh, Celtrion kind of or Shilajen, right? Um, good luck with Shilajen. <laughs> anyway, um, they keep coming up to you know to the newspaper and they say, we are coming up with a new uh, what is it? The vaccine for coronavirus. Come on, and keep on doing what you're used to doing. Come on, and don't try to you know. <laughs> Don't try to deceive the investors somehow, okay? Um, yeah, so um, those kind of uh, biotech companies, right? Biotech companies, they have high R&D expenses, right? And then they keep on spending it. And then, uh, and then this kind of industry is high risk, uh, highly risky in the first place, right? Um, and then, uh, beta being less than one, these are consumer um, staple goods, okay? They call it, people call it um, defense stock, okay? Defensive stock, okay? Uh, doesn't mean that this is a uh, uh, or like defensive material uh, producers, no. Uh, but defense stock, defending against what? Defending against the recession. When the recession hits, well, like this time around, P 
people rush into the we see that we've seen that right people rush to the uh, grocery stores and fight for the toilet papers come on right people let's have some sense please right um, toilet papers but rather diapers I would say diapers um, your babies right babies keeps on coming and then babies keeps on pooping and peeing right you can never say to your baby and say oh my poor little baby don't poop poop means what don't sa right don't poop because this is recession no if you say that or if you do it then people call it what child abuse don't do it man um you have to secure you have to buy those pampers and then those huggies kind of you know um kijogi right uh, all the time right um so people will buy this kind of goods no matter what okay um they will reduce the consumption of this kind of luxury goods and then high-tech goods to secure the basic needs of their lives right um yeah not only babies but also um elderly people needs diapers also yeah um so the consumption is there and also exxon mobil yeah yesterday I, I also re how do you say refueled my car uh with this gasoline right um you have to you know keep on uh consuming this gasoline somehow uh no matter what right um of course this time right this time with this uh coronavirus i refueled my car uh like a, it's been like a two months right almost like two months uh, I, since i refueled my car i realized that whereas uh before coronavirus i was refueling my car every like three weeks or something right um because i'm not moving this uh, this time around right um but still i'm you know keep consuming this kind of things um right beta being negative okay is an interesting case over here beta being negative you see harmonic gold mining what do you mean gold mining well that means gold right gold kind of things right um when the economic crash and then the deep recession happens then what do people look for as an investment tool or um to secure their asset well they look for gold right uh, some uh, many friends of mine right uh keep asking themselves or ask me right is it a good time to buy gold right did you see the gold price okay gold price chart right um this is the economic you know a recession right May, uh maybe there comes a huge disaster in the economy so much so that our cash the uh currencies okay will you, you, how do you say we may suffer from high inflation later on because we print too much money these days um to secure as as a you know uh means of last resort right um drastic fiscal policy right then uh, this is 2020 right april and then the other day the you know the 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 government is kind of pondering upon wow maybe we should give all the people like uh 500,000 korean won right regardless of their uh, wealth or whatever okay everybody the same amount of money printed and then give it to them right um we need that kind of uh, fiscal stipul uh, stimulus right now um because it's the economy is in such a disaster right now but afterwards what can happen well too much too much money maybe too much inflation going on if that is the case uh the only thing that you can trust on uh maybe gold why not us dollars because us is doing the same thing anyway um so that's part that's majorly majorly why they look for gold these days but already the gold price has gone up and then um and then also uh, people don't think about this uh disaster as uh, as much serious um they don't seem to be you know 
taking it as uh, that much serious right now. Maybe we don't need to worry about it. Uh, shall we take a look at the gold price? Okay, uh, where do we go? Well, the way I typically do will be like what? Um, d -d -d. Go to the internet, right? Most of your answers to your, you know, the answers to most of your questions in life comes from Google. <laughs> So I would say gold price, not golf, gold price chart, yes, gold price per ounce of gold, okay, you see this, and goldpricechart.org is there for you, okay, and you see $1,646 right now, okay, and five days chart that you can see over here I'm gonna disappear a little bit here okay so what do you see five days price chart of gold is over here right uh, we just don't need five days but I want to see all okay all-time high versus all-time low okay where does the gold stand right now over here right um, Historically, in 2009, right, 2009, when there was a global financial crisis, right, the gold price hit its uh, maximum, okay? Uh, are we hitting that maximum soon or not? Well, maybe, maybe, but why doesn't it hit it right away, right away, immediately? Well, in 2009, that was a crisis in the financial system. That was really a challenging time for the banking industry. And then it, it was about the currency and the money and then those kind of things, right? Uh, the trust about the financial system went down. So the, uh, the gold uh, price shoot up, shoot up, shot up, right? Uh, like crazy, surged like crazy, okay? Um, in that period. But this time around, right? It's not really about the financial system but it's about the real economy itself. So that's why it may be taking longer time to uh, go up to that maximum level. Maybe it will not go there, maybe. Um, and then it's, if, we, if we take a look at the one year price chart, right? you see that the price have been going up and then it was plunging down. So somebody during the March time, when there was a stock market, uh, you know, stock market crash, somebody rushed to gold market, and then eventually they lost money um, over the last couple of uh, weeks, and then its pr price is recovering, but it's just uh, keeps on getting volatile. Okay, um, the gold price we don't know. The key idea that I'm trying to uh, see uh, tell you over here is that uh, typically gold is perceived as a, a more defensive asset okay when the economic disaster happens uh, this is the material or the asset the people rush to okay um, right and then so uh, gold price goes against the economic cycle boom time well lower gold price bust time higher gold price so negative correlation goes on negative beta happens for gold and then same thing goes on for gold mining because these guys are the uh, extractors of the gold and then selling it to the market right um, not directly to the market but the intermediaries but in essentially it's the same cycle going on negative correlation with the macroeconomy how about other stocks, uh, other industries um, that may have some uh, negative beta? There could be, there could be. But uh, in, aside from the industries, right, some of the assets, some contracts can have negative beta. Okay, those assets that gives you better return during your economic bust time, okay, disaster time that will have negative beta. For example, insurance contract, okay, insurance contracts, right? Um, those contracts in Pohom Kayak itself, right? The contract itself, it's difficult to perceive this as an asset, uh, to perceive uh, their beta being there, right? 
Um, but this kind of contracts should have negative beta, if there should be any beta itself, right? Uh, conceptually, right? Um, for example, for example, um, CDS kind of things, um, credit default swap, we talked about it before, is a kind of an insurance that pays you when the borrower goes bankrupt, okay? CDS contract uh, about, let's say, Samdasu over here, by the way, Samdasu, okay? Uh, first of all, Samdasu, this water company, company itself, Samdasu's beta, what do you think it would be like, okay? This is what? Um, water company, consumer goods, I would say this is consumer staple, people keep on drinking water, so the beta will be positive, but less than one, okay? Um, um, but let's say this company has some borrowing. Okay? This company borrowed money from, let's say, Bank of America. And then Bank of America wanted to get protected about the loan they had exposed to Samdasu. Okay? Bank of America is afraid. Oh my God, what if Samdasu goes bankrupt? Okay? I want to get covered and then get insured or go into... Um, CDS um, contract, okay? CDS contract to get protected about this their loan to Samdasu, right? Then the CDS contract, okay? This kind of insurance will have negative beta because when would this Samdasu go bankrupt? More likely when there is a huge economic bust, okay? Um, okay, people will keep on buying those uh, those waters and then all these uh, consumer goods but if the huge disaster okay depression huge depression happens then people will stop buying this samdasu and start to drink sudomul or just the tap water right um, so much so that they may go they may face bankruptcy in that case this cds will work and then some insurer will repay or the pay to the Bank of America. Okay, here's your insurance. We'll pay you instead of Samdasu. So uh, in a bust time or deep recession time, the uh, CDS protection or insurance protection will work for you. In contrast, in boom time, you, de you get no pay from this uh, insurance contract. Okay, because Samdasu will pay their own loan with their own cash, right? No problem, we're going to repay you. So the CDS contract pays nothing to you. Okay, CDS contract pays nothing during the boom time, but it pays you, more likely to pay you in the deep recession, in a bust time. So the beta of the insurance contract or CDS kind of things will have, will be negative. Okay, will be negative. Talking about, uh, having said that, right, having said that the insurance contract itself is negative beta, uh, how about the beta of insurance company, okay, insurance company, that is what, would that beta be negative as well or positive, okay, insurance company beta. Would that be negative beta or positive beta? Okay, that's a quiz that I want to ask you, right? Um, for that purpose, well, let's look at um, the our good old friend, Naval Finance. Okay, Naval Finance. Uh, I will go to. Da -da -da. Yes, and then there I. A punch in what? Uh, finance, naver.com. Okay, it's readily available. And then I would say, Samsung, Sengmyung, should I say? Okay. Samsung, Sengmyung, right? Samsung, Sengmyung. And then, let's see there. 
어, 종목 분석 analysis of their company stock and then you see beta okay Samsung life insurance beta what is it is it negative or positive 1.51 what and you said insurance contract is negative beta but insurance company is positive beta what the hell is wrong with you and you may say it but wait a minute okay wait a minute you have to think about who pays the insurance amount insurance coverage right who pays it is the insurance company that pays you during the bad times right so contract itself is negative beta but the payer okay who gets the burden of paying those obligation right it is their burden so more burden for insurance companies during the bust time so that their beta is positive not only positive as you see it is this higher than one this time right um you can see it right all the trouble comes in and then this is a time when the insurance has to pay them for example let's say tourist industry okay tourism industry right a lot of tourism industry um, they get insured okay those restaurants and hotels and they worry about the situation they would not be able to have those customers coming in so weather insurance 날씨 파생 상품 날씨 kind of insurance weather insurance they get into it okay uh, where do they go well they ask Samsung uh, Fire and Marine, Samsung Hwaje, or Hyundai Haesang kind of you know, uh, insurance companies, or AIG kind of companies, and then say, get insured, okay? they get covered by this insurance contract. And the contract says, in case you don't have any travelers coming into your, comp uh, your, your restaurants, we're going to pay you $1 million for you. Okay? So this insurance contract itself is negative beta because it goes again it goes to the other direction with the economy right that's what we see right now all the travelers industries right um, uh, they are in the bust but they get paid by their through their insurance contract okay but who pays them well it is the unfortunate insurance companies right so you will see some news going on about this insurance companies being in trouble these days, right? Um, is there going to be a second order financial crisis because of this kind of insurance company's trouble? Well, that's something worth investigating going into the future, right? We don't know. Hopefully they are not, uh, they will not be in that much of a trouble, but we don't know. This is a massive scale trouble that will hit the insurance industries and the reinsurance industries korean re kind of companies right uh we don't know okay uh let's hope for the best okay